from this video we will start with data science and machine learning. First let's talk about what is data science and what we can do with it. Data science is a combined field that uses mathematics, process, algorithms and system to extract the knowledge and insights to provide a meaningful information based on large amount of data. And extracting the insights from data has a direct application of statistics and computation. And since these data actually comes from different channels and platforms like smartphones, social media, surveys and internet searches, we call it raw data. So to get useful information from raw data, we need to do some further steps like data processing, data cleaning and then we go for data analysis. We will learn and implement all these steps in Python. And these are the following libraries we will use to apply all those steps. And behind doing all these things, our main goal is to make machine capable of taking decisions and making predictions based on data we provide. This is where we apply machine learning algorithms. We will discuss about machine learning and its algorithms in much more details after finishing our data analysis and visualization part. From this video, we will start with NumPy. The major feature of NumPy is that it gives Python an array object that is much more efficient and better suited for mathematical calculation than a standard Python list. To see an example, we will create two lists of integers and then we will try to perform scalar multiplication on this list. Look what happened, element of list got repeated twice instead of getting multiplied by 2. And what if we try to add some constant to our list? It gives you an error saying that it can only concatenate a list to a list but not any integer. So let's try adding our x and y list. So you can see that instead of element by element addition, it has concatenated it into a single list. But that is not what we want. We want to perform scalar multiplication element by element or scalar operation element by element. And this is where numpy array comes into play. And to create a numpy array, we use array method. This array method takes some argument, but these argument have some default value except the object argument. So we can pass our list as an object to form a numpy array. We are ready with our numpy array, which looks something like this. And if we want to perform a scalar multiplication on this array, then we will get an expected result, which is multiplying every element by 2. And similarly, we can perform addition as well. So as you can see, we are able to do basic scalar operation. But what if we want to calculate values of some linear expression or polynomial for each value in the array? To do so, we will define a function with x as an input variable and return the value of some polynomial like 3x square minus 2x plus 7. And to compute the value of polynomial for each value of this array, we will pass the array itself as x in the function we defined. You can see that our function f of x has been applied element by element on the numpy array. And just like math module of python, numpy provides similar kind of function which we can apply on numpy array on element by element basis. For example, if you want to calculate square root of each element of array x, then you can call sqrt method on that array and it will return the output with square root. We can also calculate the values for trigonometric functions like cosine value. Now let's discuss how we can create two dimensional array with numpy. To create two dimensional array, we will pass the list of list instead of a single list like this. And you don't have to pass a list every time you create an array. There is a simpler way you can create a large array using arrange method. This method takes start, stop and step size as input and generates the array. By default step size is 1 if you do not give it a value explicitly. But this is one dimensional array. What if we want it to be two dimensional? Then we can call reshape method on it. Reshape method takes number of rows and columns we want the array to have. Notice that multiplication of number of rows and column must be equal to the size of array, else it will give you an error. To create array of all zeros, we will use zeros method and the shape of our array as input. And similarly, to create array of all ones, we use ones method. 
and if we want to create uniformly spaced point between two numbers then we can use lin space method which takes start stop value and the number of point we want so as you can see that we got five uniformly spaced point starting from zero and stopping at 10. One extremely notable aspect of NumPy is in the manner it extends the Python list indexing functionality especially with multi-dimensional array. To learn the indexing and slicing technique we will make a simple two-dimensional array of values ranging from 1 to 12 and the shape of three rows and four columns. We are ready with our two-dimensional array and same as Python list indexing starts from zero. Suppose we want to grab the first row of this array then we will pass index 0 in this square bracket. And now I want to select a sub region from an array let's say 6, 7, 10 and 11. So for that we will select the rows we want to start from then type a colon and then the row we want to stop at. To select the column we will write a comma first and then type the starting column index and stopping column index separated by a colon and notice that the stopping value of both rows and column is not included so it is up to 3 not including 3. We got the expected result. To show you one more example of selecting subsection of array I will try to select value 1, 2, 5 and 6. And to select a specific column we do something like this. Since here all rows will be included, we really don't need to specify the starting and stopping point. Writing only the colon means to select the rows from starting to end and after that we just need to specify the index of column we want. And if we want to select a specific value from a 2D array then we can use two square brackets. First we'll take the row index and second we'll take the column index. We can also select the values of numpy array based on conditions like to select all the values from array where it is greater than 5. And if you write only the condition instead of passing it in the square bracket then you will get the array of boolean. And if you want to know the minimum and maximum value of array then you can use min and max method like this. We can also create an array of random values using a random method. This random.rand method takes the shape of array as input and return the random values between 0 and 1. And if you want to generate array of random integers in some specific range then you can use a random.randint method. This method takes the range as first and second input and the number of random numbers you want to generate as third input. In this video we have discussed most of the important things you need to know about NumPy. But if you want to know more about it then I will attach the link of official resources with this video which you can go through later.